Judges chapter 6. I invited people to join us because I do have an announcement to make and I'm going to go ahead and make that announcement. I've been studying Judges chapter 6, chapter 7, and chapter 8 all this week on Gideon. Before I went to bed last night, I believe the Father spoke to me. If you re recall the story that he started off with some 32,000 men to fight 120,000 people. And through the dog lapping there at the waterside, the father dwindled the number down to 300 to fight against 120,000 people. Because the father wanted Israel, which was in rebellion, to know, I am the Lord God. I am the Father. I am the Deliverer. And the father kept putting 300 into my heart and mind. 300 people. And I'm doing something today that this ministry has never done. And we've been online. We're celebrating five years, the mm -hmm. month of December of being online. I'm asking for 300 people. 300 people. It may be in a husky North Carolina or all right here in northeastern North Carolina because many of those people watch this broadcast at their convenience after they walk out of church because we see their faces <coughs> through our, the sight through the ministry site. They don't have to click. We know they've been there. I'm asking 300 people. They may be in Pakistan, India, or Africa, or Jamaica, to give to this ministry $20 per month. You say, preacher, do what? We're in 2021. I'm asking for $20 per month to give to Gideon's army here at Growing Together Ministry. That's 65 cents a day that they would give to this ministry that we could take our connections that we have in India and Pakistan many, many connections and get the word of God that we preach here every Sunday morning and Thursday night translated into their language. And it costs money to translate the word of God where it will come across the bottom of the screen. And it also costs money to do what we presently do we're asking for 300 people. Will you be one of those 300 people that would commit to this ministry $20 per month? Some of you can do more than that. And some of you, that will be a stretch. But I'm praying that we will form Gideon's army right here in Lewiston, Woodville, North Carolina to take back the territory the enemy has taken from your families and in taken in Africa, in Nigeria, in Mombasa, Kenya, and all over Africa, Tanzania, all over Pakistan, all over India, where the enemy has taken away that there could be one more voice. We're there. 
but we're there in the English translation. And we want to be there to be able to be translated into other languages. We've been there for five years, but not until today have I asked because it's not cheap. We want to share the word of God all over the world from Lewiston, Woodville, North Carolina. Amen. And do a more effective job than we're currently doing. Because you know what? We can do more. We can do more. And I'm asking those online to give. $20 a month, or you could give a one-time gift for the whole year of $240. Your dollars will be used to further the gospel. It will not further my pocket or this ministry. It will further reaching the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have a lot of ministries didn't discover online until COVID. We were three years ahead of most ministries because God laid it on my heart five years ago, not when COVID started in March 2020, to reach the world. And we've done very well, but we need financial support. Praise the Lord. And at, on the Growing Together ministry page on Facebook, at the top, a debit or credit card you that are watching can give to this ministry or write to us here at Growing Together Ministry, Post Office Box 12, Lewiston, Woodville, North Carolina, and send a check or a money order to the ministry to help us reach the world. Let's get into the Word of God today. I know many may say what they're getting ready to do now because that concerns the future of this ministry. We're asking for 65 cents per day donation to help us to see unsaved people saved that you've never seen before. I've never seen before. And when we get to heaven, you and I can say you were a part of Gideon's army. You were one of those 300 people that said, I'll give. Let's look at the Word of God today. Judges chapter 6, and let's start with verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, Gideon, and said unto him, The Lord is with you. I prepared a portion of this message for Kingdom Purpose Television and on Facebook and uh, other media sites on Friday night. For the Lord to say to Gideon, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor, you strong man, of faith that you will go in and tear down the idol worship that is in Israel. You will tear down the strongholds. You will walk in and physically remove the idols that were in the temple of God. You will be strong enough no matter what people say. You will move out for the Father. The Father is looking people today that will move out. We cannot sit still and leave it for someone else to do. Amen? Amen. We cannot sit still and let life pass us by when there's life in us. We're still breathing this morning. There's still much to be done for the Father. And we cannot let go this morning. But what did he say? The Lord is with you. What would the Lord say to you and I right now if he was to speak 
directly to you. Those watching online all around the world and will watch thousands by tape delay. What will the Lord say if he spoke to you right now? Judges chapter 6 verse 12. You're lazy. Give up on the house of the Father. You walked out of my house and you sat home every Sunday. What would the Lord say to you and I if he was to speak directly to us right now? Would he say, I am with you, you mighty, strong lady or strong man or would he say you have hobbled into the house of the father time and time again you walk crippled right now and you could walk in victory but you've walked into the house of the father many times and you walk out crippled mentally and spiritually because you have not walked with me and trusted me as you should have. What would the Father say to you and I this morning if he spoke directly to you? Think about that for a moment. Verse 13, and Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? As you recall, for seven years, Israel was in the hands of the Midianites. They were being oppressed in their own country. How many know that you can be in your own home and be oppressed by the forces of darkness. How many know that you can be in your own job and be oppressed by the forces of darkness? They will oppress every time they would go out into the garden to plant. The Midianites would destroy their gardens. The Midianites did this for seven years. Every time an Israelite thought he'd made progress, the Midianites would take everything they had. God, our Father, can take everything we have right now. Don't you doubt that on this Sunday morning from Lewiston, Woodville, North Carolina. He can take the clothes right off your back if he wants to. Amen. He can strike you and I dead Amen. right now if he chooses. Amen. It's nothing to play with, with the Father. It had befallen the chosen people because of sin. There are many that walk in and out of the church today and they still play with sin. How do you say that, Pastor? How can you even talk that? Because if there is pride in you, you're in sin. If there's pride, you think you're better than someone because your marriage has lasted longer than someone else. That's called pride. That's sin. When you boast because you're better off than someone else, that's called pride. I haven't done what they did. That's called pride. Pride is sin. Many do not recognize that. They 
They toot their little horns. They toot their little horns. But they've done much worse than what they talk about in their private lives, in their minds. Because they would be further along with the Father. They wouldn't talk that way if they were deeper in the Father. Pride will separate you from the abundance of the harvest of God. And that is sin for all of us, for me included. Sin to think I'm better than someone because that didn't happen to me. It had befallen them. Verse 13, Judges chapter 6. And where be all his miracles which our father told of us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us out from Egypt? He sure did. After how many years? Forty. Forty years. Because of what? Sin. But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Mennonites. I want to say to you today very clearly, America is on the verge of going into the hand of the enemy. I want to say that again. America is on the verge of going into the hand of the enemy because of sin in the church Sin on the side of the road, sin in the job, and sin everywhere. We have, we have loosened the word sin, and now we call it we love one another. We've loosened and watered down sin that is sin in the Bible to now say it's love. If it was sin in the word of God, God, it's still sin today. Amen. 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 You woke up then. Amen. Gideon was speaking these words to the Father. Verse 14. And the Lord now responds, look upon him and said, go in this your might and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Benedite son. Have not I sent you? If we are a believer this morning, we are a Christian. The Father has sent us. Jesus. It may be in your life the sending part is still in the lazy boy. But the Father has sent us as he sent Gideon. If you won't stand up and move forward, you're dying. The Father has a calling on every individual that is in this tabernacle today and watching online, yeah. live or tape delay. The Father has a calling for you to move out and trust Him. When His soft, small voice speaks, we have to move. If I would have said still, we wouldn't have been where we're at today. And what we've accomplished all over the world for the Father with Growing Together Ministry. But the Father, I believe, last night said it's time to get people all over the world to help out too. To help us. They watch you regularly. It's time that they sow seeds into this ministry. They've been blessed for five years. It's time that they move forward for the Father. Amen. Verse 15, And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith 
shall I save Israel. Behold, my family is poor in Manassas, and I am the least in my father's house. Verse 15, Gideon humbles himself. He's already gave him to commission. I'm going to appoint you to rescue Israel from the Midianites. I have given you a task. How many times in my life and in your life today has the Father told you to do something and you sat back and did not do it? How many times has the Father told you to do something and you sat back and you did not do it? Jesus. That time that you set back as an individual is the time that could have been the breakthrough for the rest of your life. Let me say that again. The time that you set back could have been your greatest breakthrough in the Father. And you were too scared to reach out. And trust the Father. Jesus. But he humbled himself. Gideon had an exalted opinion of the Lord, but none of all of himself. If you're going to walk out, and I am going to walk out as Gideon done and leave the 300. To conquer the 120,000 Mennonites of darkness. We have to humble ourselves. We must be in a state of humility. Being not humble is also sin. Boasting all the time of what you have and what you don't have. That's sin. Jesus didn't walk around doing that. We and I should not do that. Verse 16, And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with you. I want you to put your name in that this morning. Surely David I will be with you. I want you to put your name in that this morning. Surely, my wife's name is Lisa. Lisa, I will be with you. Surely, no matter how difficult the task is before you today, no matter how difficult your past has been, it's time to have some faith in God. It's time to move out in God. It's time to stand up and say, I'll come out of my laziness. I'll come out of my home and I'll serve God with fire in my bones again. I'll get excited about the Father again with fire in me. I won't come to church and drag in and walk in and walk out like I got a million problems. I'll walk into the house of the tabernacle with praise and glory to the Father. I'll jump up and down and march throughout the house because the Father can give you the ability to jump up and shout and move. You, it's a lot of things in your mind. Right now, you say you can't do anymore. But I'm telling you, in the Father, you can do all things. Or you call the Word of God a liar. If you can't do all things, you're calling God a liar today. Do you want to call God a liar? You can do 
way. And it's time for others to want to get on the joy train. It's time for others to get excited about a move of God and stop waiting to die and start living. Stop waiting to die and start living. Stop worrying about all your health conditions. Give it to God and keep marching. When you feel like falling down, you say, I'll stand. Hallelujah. Hey. There are times I could have sat home this morning. But I have a position in the Father that I must fulfill. I don't walk in here with a little sagger of like a little puppy dog wigging his tail. Well, I'm just here. I'm here with the Father to make a difference in your lives. That you're changed yeah. by the power of God. Hallelujah. I'm here not to broadcast how much I know. Because I'm a dummy when it comes to a lot of stuff. I'm man enough to admit it. But what I do know, God will see you through. Yes. If you're march when he tells you to march. Gideon had his doubts. Looked at his family history. If I looked at my family history, I wouldn't do much marching. If I looked at my job life, I wouldn't do much marching. But I'm not looking to my family. I'm not looking to my job. I'm looking to the Father today. I love you today. I love you today. I'm looking to the Father to reach out and take me by the hand when I want to fall down and walk with me. When I feel like crying, He lifts me up. Glory to God. I have faith today. I exalt the Father today from Lewiston, Woodville, North Carolina. I exalt it. I'm on fire for God. Mm -hmm. I'm excited and I believe you are. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh, some people need someone to touch their physical hand and tell them it's going to be all right. But there's many people today don't need someone to touch their physical hand because they have faith in God it's going to be all right. There's a calling on your lives today to do more than you're doing. There's a calling on my life to do more than I'm doing. And it comes with trusting the Father. Glory. Hallelujah. Well, no. We go on with Gideon. The Lord said, I am with you. Mm. Verse 17. Judges chapter 6. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in your sight, then show me a sign that you talk with me. And you know there was the signs of the dew that came up. Today, I've never, when I felt the Father speaking, I've never asked him to show me a sign. I've had enough faith that he's going to do it. Jesus. Amen. I'm encouraged in the Father today. He's alive. He's watching you right now. He's got his, his face is on your face spiritually right now. And you that are watching online, I'm encouraged. These people that need signs, that bothers me. If he, do, if he does nothing else for William David Ray, he saved me and got me back in the pulpit. I don't need to see a miracle to me this morning to reassure me the Father is alive. Amen. 
I believe he's alive. And I'm not doubting the, fl the, the fleece of being dry. The fleece was wet and then the ground was wet. The opposite. I, I'm not taking anything from that passage. But God led me to say what I said. Because so many people are waiting on a miracle before they move out in God. Jesus. You need to go on and move out in the Father without having to see a miracle. Amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That's when your faith is strong. Amen. Woo! Amen. Glory to God. That's powerful. Glory to God. What if, if we, we could read on and we won't today, and we could go in to how the Father distinguished the people of the how they would drink the water as a dog or they would get on their knees. Why do you think that is in the passage in chapter 7, chapter 8 of Judges when he finally got down to 300 people, the ones that would do like a dog, and the other ones, they got on their knees. There's a difference. Can you get up fast if you're on your knees and the enemy's coming around you? That's why. You've got, and you and I both have to be watching. There's, I will face an enemy before this day is over. It'll be a text of some sort to try to discourage me. There'll be some type of foolishness that comes to me before this day's over. It's guaranteed it happens daily. I'm on my knees in prayer in my private closet. But when I'm out in the open in the river, I'm not on my knees. I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm watching. Don't be surprised what person may run up behind you this afternoon and try to steal your joy. I'm watching. I'm watching. And it's just not because I've had over a decade in, a, in the state prison system. I'm watching spiritually. People want to hurt you mentally. And if you're going to be in Gideon's army and do the will of the Father, God is doing a work in our lives. Did, did the enemy attack the internet? Yes, they attack on us. I could feel, I could feel opposition. I can feel it. I'm saying to each one of you, don't get so relaxed in your eating and in your drinking. Don't get so relaxed in your gatherings because the enemy is looking a door to get into your life and destroy you. We need warriors Jesus. for yes. the Father today. We yes. need warriors for the Father today. I love you, mm -hmm. and God the Father loves you today. Amen. Be encouraged. Read Judges chapter 6, chapter 7, and chapter 8, and you'll get the complete picture of what I, I have been speaking on today. We've got to be ready. We can, and, and do you know that our Sunday school lesson this morning dealt with Ephesians chapter 6, the armor of God, and I didn't even relate the two until right then. Amen. So the Father is working over here in Lewiston Woodville. Amen. If, if people want to receive, this is the place to come. He's moving in a powerful way. Pastor Larry Lilly.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God for that powerful word today. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Let, let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you for what you're doing here in each individual's lives. We thank you for the leadership that you've given us for this ministry, God, to make decisions. We thank you, oh God, that we, we understand the enemy will attack. And we understand that it will be unmerciful attacks. But God, we also understand that we'll have the ability and the wisdom and the power through God to squash those attacks. Yes. To stop the enemy in his tracks, if you will. Because the enemy cannot stop what God wants to do, Father. We pray, God, that you'll be with those this week, God, in whatever country may be watching. We pray that you'll help them, God, what they'll face. <clears throat> and God, they'll be able to give a testimony of victory, of victory, of victory. Glory, glory. And God is his 300 men, God. Because God wanted to dwindle the army down so they could not take credit for the victory. Glory. But knowing that the victory came, God, from you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We just pray, God, that be with us, oh God, this week. <coughs> to be your will, God, bring us back Thursday to be back in this tabernacle again, God. Yes, Lord. For another word of God on the pasture. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.